hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com my name is Jason Newland and this is going to be a well actually it's a requested session for Claire so it's going to be based on focusing on overeating or to reduce overeating so that's what this is about in Claire's case uh, there also does uh, there's an issue with chronic pain as well so I'm not going to focus on the chronic pain specifically but I'm going to focus on the uh, the urges to overeat and that's what I'm going to be focusing on this session I do actually have lots of sessions for chronic pain that are available for you to watch or listen to if you choose uh, available on my website available on YouTube SoundCloud Spotify and various different places and that's it so I won't go into details about uh, what's been asked for this session but it's going to be available for everyone that has an issue or that's had an issue with compulsive eating so here we go only watch this or listen to this when you can safely close your eyes and just to assure everybody that I won't always be bald I, I will grow my hair back just in case that's worrying anybody I shaved it all off last night not technically important for the session but there you go so I'd like you to get your self comfortable if you're sitting in a chair find a chair that supports your body and if you fell asleep you'll still be safely comfortable in the chair so you know make sure you've got one with sides and a back uh, and if you're sitting if you're lying on a bed or you may even be lying on the floor just make sure that you're comfortable and comfort is comfort and safety are the two most important things when you're listening to these sessions. It's also worth remembering that I've got a little ferret running around called Andre and occasionally he gets into mischief and he might come in here and start making a little bit of sound. At the point, at the moment, he's actually scratching something in the bedroom. So. I don't know why, but he's got all this energy suddenly. I've been chasing him around for the last half an hour, but he loves that. So there may be background sounds. Right. So if you close your eyes, of course you don't have to close your eyes, but you might find it a bit easier to focus because this isn't sleep. This isn't uh, a boring, let me bore you to sleep session. Although it may be boring and you may fall asleep. However, that's just what may happen. And also what may happen is even before we start, even as you may be wondering what I'm gonna say, you know, what, uh, what things I'm gonna talk about, you've opened yourself up to the possibility of change. You've opened the door already to allowing me in and to allowing things within in your brain to actually 
move, you know, different connections to start connecting. Maybe a, a degree of rewiring within your mind for this specific subject, this topic, this thing that we call overeating, or you may call it binge eating. You may, you may have your own term for what it was. So by actually listening on to me, you've given me permission to tap into that part of your mind which can easily make changes. So if you don't give permission for that, if you don't give permission for me to talk to your unconscious mind so that when this session is finished, you feel, you're gonna feel different. Then just click the stop button and move on with your day. And that's fine. And remember that we are together for the journey. The journey of this session is not like I'm entering into your mind and I'm all on my own and I'm just doing whatever I want to do and I'm having a big party because I'm not. We're there together. Making no change, those changes that you want to occur. Because this is, a, it's about you. It's about you. It's about your life. And maybe the feeling that you would like to live longer with a healthier lifestyle. Maybe you've been concerned about the overeating, maybe it's affecting you physically and you want to make those changes so that you have a healthier life, so that you can be around for longer and be healthier for longer. And it's not a case of putting any kind of a guilt trip on you as far as imagining how devastated those people that love you would be if anything, you know, bad was to happen to you due to the overeating. And I just kicked the camera, but now the camera's steady again. I've got no idea. There's a voluntary movement, an involuntary movement of my right foot for no reason. Maybe it's telling me something. I could do losing some weight as well, but maybe we can do that together. You know what I like? I like the idea that we can change our mind can change your mind really easily and really quickly because there's sometimes you know when you've got you know somebody maybe it's been in the past it might be a celebrity even someone that you really perhaps admired or some or maybe you, you thought a certain way about them and then you get some new information And your whole opinion changes about that person in an instant. Or maybe it's a song uh, that you've never, you know, a group that you've never listened to or a film that you've never watched. And I remember, what was it? I think it was Titanic. I refused to watch the film at the time of its release. Partly because I knew the ending, but 
uh, separately from that, I kind of didn't like the idea of a love story being attached to something like that. But it was, there was so much um, media attention, and uh, so I kind of like, oh no, I don't want to watch it. But then when I did watch it, a couple of years later, I really enjoyed it because it's a really well put together film. So my opinion changed instantly. In the same way as you may be unsure, there's a whole thing about Marmite. You know, do you like Marmite? Either people like it or they really don't like it. But before you've tasted Marmite, and you you have might call it um, mite spread, or you might have a different name for it, but it's basically this blob of black, um, yeasty, beefy glob blob thing that people either really like or they don't. And the advertising campaign, you know, they play up on that. So if you never tasted it, your opinion might be, I won't like that or I will like that. It could be, I don't know. So there could be a bit of uncertainty about you know, so in the same way, you might be feel uncertain. Ah, we'll listen to this bloke with glasses and a bald head. Will that? Will, will it help? Will it? How can something as simple as listening to somebody just talking, as well as kicking the camera and then mentioning it and being just not? It's like he's not even focused, but he is focused, but how can that help? And is that uncertainty? The good thing about uncertainty, it leads to certainty. So sometimes you need to move from certainty to uncertainty and then to certainty again. Or move from certainty to uncertainty to an open mind, to options, open to new ideas, new changes. And then when you have that change, then it becomes a certainty, as in, from now on, you'll feel different. When it comes to those periods, maybe late at night, in the middle of the night, whenever it is that you have used to have that urge to maybe eat. There's something different. Something feels different. Even when you imagine it, just by imagining it in your mind now, something changes. It feels different, but you don't know why. But it feels different. It's as if moving from the certainty of, the thing is you had that expectation. And the expectation is one of the most powerful things ever. When we expect something to happen, it's more than likely to happen when we expect it to happen. even if it's just a feeling, and even if the reality isn't exactly how we expect it to be. It could be getting in late from work, or maybe you've been out with your friends, and you get home, and you're worried that your partner will be angry because you missed your dinner, or you didn't phone to say you were gonna be late, and you're expecting the the painful communication or miscommunication that may occur once you arrive home. You're already experiencing those feelings. 
before it even happens. Which means you may walk into that house already for some kind of argument or something. Which means there's more likelihood of an argument happening if you're ready to have an argument. You know, in the same way as if you're ready to make those changes in your mind so that you come to that point in the day or the evening and even thinking about it now imagining maybe a reenactment of last night or the night before or the day before or earlier today even but something's changed maybe you you're seeing an image of yourself sitting in maybe the kitchen or going to open the fridge or the freezer or you know doing something with the oven going into the food cupboard but there's something different about the picture and it doesn't doesn't look right I had that earlier I was I did a relaxation session last night and the internet's playing up a little bit so I had to wait a while because I wanted to upload it but I couldn't last night so today just a little while ago literally about an hour ago maybe less I put a title for it I decided to call it relaxation healing and safety that was the, it's about 25 minutes long uh, and the word relaxation didn't look right to me and I started to question it as I as relaxation got a is that I a n but it's not I a n it's I o n I know it's I o n I've been writing relaxation in the titles of sessions for over 12 years I should know how to spell relaxation just like you know eat less e-a-t-l-e-s-s -S. it's you know how it's sometimes like oh and it just in the same way it didn't look right I'm sure if you've had that as well you've looked at a word and it just for some reason even though you know that it it is the right word, it's, it's just doesn't feel right to you. In the same way, when you, when you think about doing what you did yesterday or last night or whenever it was, maybe it's the middle of the night, and imagine doing that now if something feels different and it's hard to really kind of put your finger on it. It's like pinpoint exactly what it is that feels different. Something just is, doesn't feel right anymore. It's, um, it's, I don't know, it's, it's kind of like if you, I have to clear up Andre's mess, he does, he, he goes on paper, but I have to clear it up. But there's no way in the world I would clear it up and then, you know, I'd, I'd do it, but I wouldn't do it and then go and make myself a sandwich. I'd wash my hands, a couple of times probably. But once, occasionally, you know, it's, it's a bit grim, but you know, I'm clearing up and all the accident happens and I can't forget, once it's happened, it's like it's stuck there and I, you know, I'm washing my hands, sometimes a couple of times and I couldn't just carry on and make myself a sandwich or touching food or anything like that. something stops me from doing that it's it's it doesn't feel right to just go and just start eating 
you know, because I've got this, I have to wash my hands and there's other things that need to be done. And it's as if food just turns into food. It's no longer, it's like the more you eat, the less pleasurable it is. And that, that can be annoying because, you know, the whole point of eating, especially if it's uh, like in the middle of the night and, you know, it's maybe comfort eating, it's uh, something to take your mind off stuff or, but if it doesn't give you any pleasure, it's, it's actually quite a, not a very nice experience really so the less it's not about eating tiny amounts of food obviously we need to eat we've got all got to eat to live it's like saying or oh, only have uh, a certain amount of um breathing in of oxygen you know you can only take so many breaths a day of course you you take as many as you need but if you breathe in more than you need to, you'll hyperventilate. It's like the body knows that you can, you know, it's, the body seems to, be, I think it's amazing, don't you think? How balanced the body is, how it all does all this stuff and we don't have to think about it or do anything. Just make sure that we put in enough of the decent food, you know, vegetables and fruit and, you know, maybe eat three times a day Spa you know, spacing it out, drink plenty of water, all that stuff. All the boring things, you know. But the body, it does it all, heals, it does all this stuff. But what's amazing, I think, is what I've noticed is when you actually do what feels right, you're, you're, it's like your mind gives your body a reward. So imagine in that situation, you're looking for a reward. That's what you were looking for, maybe by going into the fridge at night. You're looking for something, to a nice feeling. But actually what you can get is a nicer feeling by not doing that. By thinking about doing it and then not gives you, I'm even getting it now, just that feeling of pleasure rushing through my body. I'm getting it from my shoulders, my arms, even in my fingers, my upper body, my chest, my stomach, all the way down to my lower back. And as that happens, as that is happening now, I can actually feel my lower back relaxing because I've, I've got issues, physical issues in my lower back, and it actually feels pleasurable, and it doesn't normally, and right now it does. That's, that's nice, I like that feeling. And it's nice to know you can have more of that. So your, your, your mind rewards you, rewards me, rewards all of us when we do the things that help us. Just like when people stop smoking, physically they have a maybe a bit more energy. There's a, the digestive system starts to work better. You know the acid levels sort of even out more, so the digestive system is more functional. which gives an overall sense of, you can give it lots of, lots of words, but it just feels nice. Give it, give it the word pleasure, whatever you wanna give it. it, just feels nice. Knowing that actually, you're allowing a change to happen now without actually doing anything but just allowing it to happen. You're giving, 
permission for whatever was driving you before to you know get into the cupboards and eat chocolate or eat ice cream or eat whatever stuff you was you know doing before whatever that drive was for some reason the energy has gone from it it's no longer got that propellant that push that it used to have Because an elephant will go to a, a pond or a lake. If it's happy, the lake's there, it's happy because it can wash, it can drink, play, everything's there for him or her. This particular elephant's called Horace and he's a boy. It's about seven years old, but you know, this doesn't have to be particularly, he's a big seven though. No? He's, he's the size of a small pie shop. But when you've got what you need and it's already there, in the same way, if you've got central heating and the temperature is a nice temperature, you don't turn the temperature up. There's no point. You, you know, you, you're at the temperature that you need, that you require, that is useful and, you know, that keeps your body warm and comfortable. In the same way food does that as well. But this isn't really about food, it's about the, it's about that feeling that you used to have, that, that want, that for some reason it's changed, it's transformed into something different. It's like it was a hot bath that's now had too much cold water added to it. And you, you just can't get the bath hot again. The bath water, you have to empty the whole thing because it's just cool. It's cool water and that's all it's going to stay. I mean, really, you know, trying to keep hold of a feeling, a, a real want. It takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of energy to keep that going. And once your brain changes, Now, once it changes, you, there's something, something happens, that energy that you're putting into holding on to that, that harmful activity that maybe you were indulging in, is no longer, it doesn't have that energy behind it, doesn't have that power that it once did. So you're no longer drawn to it the way that you were. And again, it's, it's like, why? Why has it changed? You think about it now. Think about doing that activity, doing what you did last night or earlier today going and eating things that, you, that aren't helpful for you, that are unhealthy for you possibly. And it's not necessarily that the food's unhealthy, but maybe the amount of food. And you 
can actually imagine yourself because the picture it looks wrong now you know some people you might even notice that the the fridge might have a like a different color to it it's like it's not even there's something unattractive to the fridge at that time there's something doesn't feel right about the fridge it's we do things at different times don't we some things don't feel right at different times like I wouldn't have a dessert before my main meal generally and I know sometimes there's this thing about do something be creative do things differently to how you always have done them but this doesn't feel right and even the little things such as if I make a cup of coffee I put in the milk in after the cup of coffee I would never do it any other way ever because it doesn't feel right and I know that you have those same things it might be the other way around you might need to put the milk in before putting the hot water in we all have our own ways of making tea, making coffee. And whenever I've got a can of Coke, I always rinse the top of it with water before opening. And I always do that, always. Because it wouldn't feel right not to. And I know things like that can just be habits. Which is basically what we're talking about anyway habitual behavior but some habitual behavior is harmful some isn't and some things just don't feel right anymore some things that maybe used to feel right don't and maybe things that didn't used to feel right do And part of that can be education, part of it can be just the world that we live in, things have changed, beliefs have changed in society, things that once were frowned upon are now accepted, things that perhaps once were accepted are now frowned upon, it's, uh, you can probably have your own examples of that in your lifetime. But once those changes happen, it's really difficult to go back once the changes have occurred. Because actually, because when you get that reward of not doing that behavior anymore, you're now doing a different behavior. Even though that behavior is maybe reading a book maybe watching a movie, if, if it's a not being able to sleep situation or you just want to give yourself some pleasure, there are other ways. And maybe just by not doing that activity that you used to do, gives you that pleasure. Physically, I can feel it again just physically in my chest, my shoulders, my arms, my hands, my stomach, my lower back. It's moving all the way down to my toes. And it feels nice knowing that you can make changes and allow those changes to just manifest within you, which in itself can give you pleasure without even doing it for that reason or not doing it for that reason. And then changes just seem to happen naturally. So instead of me sitting here saying, you will no longer eat uh, in the middle of the night, you'll never, no longer eat excessively, you will, whatever, you know, 
actually you already know what it is that you want you already know what it is that you need you don't need me to tell you what you already know all you need to do is give yourself permission to allow those changes to occur naturally and connected to that is this feeling of reward that you get from your mind into your body of pleasure every time that you accomplish what it is that you've chosen to change within you and then that gets connected to the new behavior whatever that is even if it's a case of the new behavior being you're in bed you think about what you used to think about doing and you just roll over smile and enjoy the physical feeling of that pleasure spreading through your body it can be as simple as that and perhaps that could lead you to sleeping much easier and to feeling physically more comfortable calmer and relaxed and again when you look back to the last time that you you know raided the fridge or the food cupboard or whatever it is and ate excessive amounts you think back to that last time that you did it the last time and that is it's like a it's something's changed even to that memory it's, it's something different feels different but there's something even even if you've got the visual in your mind there's something doesn't feel right about it anymore not in a judgmental way you're not judging yourself you're not criticizing yourself there's no guilt involved it just doesn't feel right it doesn't fit with who you are now something's changed within you so that old behavior isn't really valid anymore it's not it's not part of who you are anymore that's the past just in the same way as you no longer eat baby food at one time you did when you were a baby you no longer sit in tiny little chairs at school because you're not an infant you're not six years old anymore at school in a little chair you're doing different things you don't do that stuff anymore because you're not there anymore and I think that's something with adults that we forget that actually we're constantly changing and we are allowed to move forward in the same way when you're a child you're expected to move forward and to change your behavior and to move and do different things I think there seems to be sometimes an attitude with adults that nearly I nearly said humans there with ad adults that we can we're supposed to stay the same forever and that's not even realistic if you look at a video I made two days ago and look at me now you can see clearly I haven't stayed the same I look completely different 
two days ago I had a massive beard and uh, quite unusual hair. That's a change that I decided for myself and I did myself. It wasn't some kind of uh, emotional journey for me. It was just cutting my hair off. But we were always changing. And I don't mean this in a spiritual way. I mean this in a practical way. There's those changes that are kind of forced upon us due to environmental circumstances. But then it's those changes that we can choose to allow to happen. At the moment I drink Coke. I drink Coke, I like Coca-Cola. If I was diagnosed with diabetes, I would stop drinking Coke altogether, instantly. I would make those changes and I would no longer crave Coke. I don't crave it anyway, but. We've all made changes. All of us. And you've made so many changes in your life that you've actually purposely made changes and other times you've just allowed your mind to do what's needed for your well-being allowed your mind to make those changes so you know sometimes you haven't even had to think about it it's just happened and you feel the better for it and there's that adaptability that we all have. Being able to adapt to new situations. And isn't it weird? It's kind of strange how you think about doing that old behavior. And not only does it not feel right, it feels a bit surreal. It's something like, it's, it's like a dissociated thing. It was as if you weren't even really there when you were doing it, you know? It doesn't feel like it was real anymore. And that's, that's no longer acceptable to you. So, you know, imagine doing something and not having any awareness of it is a bit scary, really, I suppose. It's not, we need to have be connected with what we're doing, with what you're doing. You know, when you're making a sandwich, you know you're making a sandwich. And you know why you're making a sandwich. And if you're like me, you have to wash your hands first. And as you think forward, towards tonight and I'm focusing on the middle of the night a little bit it might not be that time that might not be the time that you used to indulge in that past activity it doesn't feel right anymore but whenever it was when you get to that same period of time in the next 24 hours. You'll notice, you'll really notice something, something's happened within you and it's kind of like, well, you could say, well, of course it's happened because I've listened to this uh, recording, this video specifically for this reason. But something more than that, it's what's happened within you 
that can actually really surprise you how easily these changes have occurred and you haven't really had to do anything except listen to a bald man with glasses wearing a very very extra wonderful top <laughs> and with a ferret cage in the background I just want to give a, a visual description for those of you that are listening uh, just to the podcast rather than watching the video on YouTube imagine yourself in a week's time with those changes still living still feeling that pleasure when you allow yourself to be in touch with that reward that you naturally gain from embracing those changes that you've decided to include in your life going forward. And even when you think a month ahead, two months, three months, six months, a year, The idea of doing what you used to do, that behavior that's now changed, it's as if it's like a, an old pair of smelly socks that you're just never gonna go near again. You're never gonna, why, why are they even there? Just, but maybe you haven't chucked them out just yet, you know? But eventually you think, oh. Doesn't feel right anymore. I suppose it's about adapting, adapting to those new changes and just enjoying, embracing the new lifestyle and I say that but it's a very it's it's not your whole life it's just although it can affect your whole life making a, a change the snowball effect of pleasure and positivity and confidence self-confidence the self-belief that actually, wait a minute, this changed. I wonder what else can change. I can feel pleasurable not doing the thing that I used to do. What else can I feel pleasurable about? And that confidence that you can gain from knowing that you have done this yourself. You have made these changes and allowed these changes to occur yourself. Now you've given yourself permission. Which is pretty amazing, really, when you think about it. You've allowed yourself to move forward towards a healthier, happier life. Full of confidence. And that boost of self-esteem that you have already gained from listening to this 
now kind of overtakes you, you know, it fills your body with, because all these emotions have feelings attached to them, feelings of self-worth, feelings of confidence. It's pleasurable. It feels physically pleasurable to have a sense of accomplishment, something that you have achieved yourself because you chose to allow these changes to occur so that those things from the past are just a memory. The good thing about the future is you can plan it. You can't plan the past. You can wave goodbye to the past and you can welcome the future. And you can plan because every day you build the day yourself. You build the future. Every day you're building it. It's a little bit like Fraggle Rock. I don't know if you remember Fraggle Rock. Constantly building. Always, always building. These little like builders. Always building. And that's what we're doing with our lives. We're just constantly building. Every day we construct our own lives. And you've decided to construct a different pattern, a different routine for yourself and for your health, for your life, for your happiness. Right, that's it. I think I'm going to go. It's a nice little abrupt ending. Um, if you have those to sleep. I'll count to five for you to maybe come back awake. And one, two, three, four. I want to get to five. You can open your eyes if they're not already open. Five. Open your eyes and Just get in touch with that feeling that you have. That feeling of accomplishment. That feeling of confidence that you have within yourself and your ability to make your own decisions about what you do. Because you're in charge. You're the boss of you. So enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you next time. If you like what I do, please subscribe, please share, tell all your friends about what I do. Maybe not all your friends because that would be a bit boring, wouldn't it? You know, I don't mean that if you're at a wedding, go around each individual person because, uh, especially if it's your wedding, because it's probably not the right time, but I'm just saying, let others know. I'm gonna go now. Lots of love. Take care of yourselves. Bye.